Yes, we bless, we bless the Lord uh, for this afternoon. Uh, if you can hear me, please just uh, raise your thumbs up so that I can know that you're actually hearing me. Uh, I want to see your thumbs up just to know that you can hear me all right. I have seen them. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the worship team. And uh, thank you so much, Pastor Christine, Pastor Margaret, and everyone else, our uh, brother Eni, brother Derek, uh, every one of us that is in the house is in the presence of the Lord. Yes, as we are going to share the word of the Lord, I pray that God uh, will unveil and open whatever he needs us to understand and to be able to touch us at our points of need in the name of the lord we have prayed amen amen uh today i uh, want us to share briefly i will get straight into the word i will not go around i uh, want us to talk about surrendered clay being an empowered clay and we're going to read from the book of jeremiah jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1 to 16 jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1 to 16 and this is what uh it says i am reading from is this an niv okay i'm reading uh it, it says that the word which came to jeremiah from the lord Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Verse number three. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he was working at the wheel. Number four. And the vessel that he was making from clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter, so he made it over, reworking it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it. Number five, then the word of the Lord came to me. Number six, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does, says the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O Israel, O house of Israel. I don't know, for me, uh, it's not even about the, the, the sermon. I think the scripture is just enough for me to explain the will of God and what God would want us to have or to be. Because he is the potter and we are the clay. But as we are going to see as we go ahead, most times we want to be the potter. And I don't know if we're making God the clay, but we believe that we have the best ideas and we know it all. And sometimes it just doesn't go well or it just doesn't happen according to God's will. Okay. So I want us to talk about the surrendered clay being an empowered clay. The surrendered clay being an empowered clay. Clay. And when we look at verse, uh, let's say verse 2, that's the main verse that we are going to dwell on. It says, arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my words. Arise and go down to the potter's house. Now when we talk about arising, arising is like an elevation. Kusituliwa, kuyimusibwa. Arise is, is an elevation. But when I was thinking about this word, I thought about the so many scriptures that the word talks about, the so many scriptures that the word talks about um, being lifted. And I actually discovered that in the kingdom, elevation and arising is actually so different from what the world or what the world is used to. Now, when you talk about elevation, we're talking about um being exalted okay and the bible says that to the humble he will actually exalt that if you are humble you will be exalted and the vice versa is true that if you exalt yourself then you are going to be humbled okay and it goes ahead and says that the first shall be the last so you hear the bible and its interpretation of real life is actually so different it's actually so on the opposite side of what reality concern uh, goes ahead to say so here we're talking about the clay i don't want you to forget verse jetusomie that we are talking about the clay in god's hand and he's saying arise and go down to the potter's house and there i will cause 
allows you to hear my voice okay and we are talking about a rise it's an elevation and it's different in the kingdom of god it's different in the interpretation of god that arise means that you humble yourself you are meek and you seek god and god exalts you and god lifts you that the first shall be the last when you talk about the earthly standards when someone slaps you, the first thing that comes to mind is you slap them back. Or when someone shames you or talks bad or ill about you, the first thing that comes to mind is you want to respond in the same currency like the things that they have done. But here we are seeing that actually we are supposed to love those that hate us. We are supposed to bless those that hate us. So according to the kingdom, it's totally different. And until you get the things of God and understand the things of God and live according to the things of God, and that is why he told Jeremiah, arise and go down to the, to the house of the porter. And there I will cause you to listen to my voice. Okay. Now, after the elevation, after the arising, he says, go down. Now, when he says, come, it's like God was calling him, come. Like God calls us and says, come. And this is what happens. We live in a world where so many things are going wrong. Uh, we live in a world where we live in a world where things seem to be going down instead of going up. We expect we serve a living God. So everything is going to be glory after glory after glory. From glory to glory. And that is what God promises. But guess what? From glory to glory, God did not say it's going to be a linear process. He did not say that it's going to be one level after another and then one level. Like it's going to be so, so systematic. Uh, it's going to be so pre-planned and it's going to be so perfect. That's not what he said. Let me tell you, in life, sometimes it's going to be a zigzag. But it does not mean that God is not going to take you into, he's not taking you into glory. Sometimes when you're going down, just like the Bible says, that arise and go down to the potter's house sometimes for god to mold us to for us to hear god we must go down to where he wants us to go okay and sometimes when you go down it seems like you're losing friendships it seems like um you're losing um, opportunities. It seems like you're not operating to the according to the standards of the world. It seems like the things that you should have taken uh, so seriously are not things that you're taking seriously. And you're choosing to stay at the feet of Jesus. That is down. That is being humble. That is being meek. And that actually assures us of the elevation and the arising that the God actually talks about. Okay. And sometimes it seems like a, se a season of separation. So many of us are going through things and it feels like you are lonely. It feels like no one understands you. It feels like there is a lot of fear inside of you. It feels like there is a lot of... Um a lot of uncertainty inside of you. Now, that is what it means to actually go down the season of loneliness, the season of separation. But let me tell you, God does it for a reason. God does it for a reason. There are so many times God has separated me and so many times God has separated the men of God and the women of God. Even if you ask our pastors right now who are on this broadcast, even if you ask Pastor Margaret, even if you ask Pastor Christine, that God has taken them through moments of separation. Okay, that is to prepare them for a comeback and for the harvest and for the purpose that God has created them for. Okay, and in the process of loneliness and in the process of separation, you it's it, I mean, it's possible that there will be tears. It's possible that you will feel like you're rejected, that like you're abandoned, like nothing will ever good will ever come out of it. Like there is no hope at the end. There is no light at the end of the tunnel, but it is just for a short time and God separates us for three reasons and I have seen these reasons in my life the first time I got a job uh, I could have been what must have been at 21 22 um, uh, when I got a job and so when I got that job I think I was I, I got 50,000 at the end of every month 50,000 at the end of every month. Now, 50,000 is a, I mean, I, anyone, when you talk about 50,000, that's very, very small money. And I remember one day, I, something happened. 
And when that something happened, I was actually fired. <laughs> so when I was fired, I was asking God that you, you know, I mean, wh what's your plan? At 22, at 23, I don't have money to go to campus. And uh, all my friends have gone, to, have gone to campus and maybe they're finishing up their degrees. And I am stuck. I am fired. And I've been uh, I, from a job that I, <laughs> that I was paid 50,000. And I was like, God, what next? I remember I walked down, I would walk back home and actually that was not even our home. We were being accommodated by a certain, um, by a certain family uh, because my family literally had no home. So we were being accommodated and it was one room and we stayed there, six children and our mother. And so I walked back to that and I remember bed was in the sitting room and I sat on that bed and I gave my mother the last salary that I had and I just slept on bed. So when I slept on that bed, I was like, you know what, God, I need a way out of this. And I remember God categorically speaking to me and telling me which direction to take. And I didn't know what to do. I was so lost. But he took me a certain direction. And when I tell you the direction that he took me, I mean, everyone will think, uh, a girl that has grown up in town, even if you were homeless and you didn't have school fees or tuition to go back to school, but at least you were in the city. But for me, it wasn't there. The next step that God was taking me was actually taking me deep down in the village of Kayunga to go and be a shop attendant and to sell, to sit in a shop where there was airtime of 100,000 and one phone on the counter. And that is where I went. But let me tell you, I call that a time of separation. Because when I came out of that phase, let me tell you, God had elevated me to standards that I had never known in the world. I was still in the process of going, of growing. I was still in the process of arising. But let me tell you, God did not leave me the same. So this is what I, I actually uh, take from my separation. The three things, the three reasons as to why God separates us and takes us down. Number one is that he will equip you with the tools that you need to, to not to survive but to thrive in this life if you have a pen you can write it down is to equip you with the tools with the knowledge that you need to thrive in this world because the world this world is not for the faint-hearted no this world is not for the quitters no this world is not for the people the cry babies no this world is the for the people that have muscled up that have fought that have gone through the situations and have come out the other side in triumph and in victory. So the reason as to why God will take us down, if you feel like this is your season of separation, if you feel that this is your season of, it seems like you're abandoned, it seems no. You are being equipped and you are being uh, given the tools to thrive. Number two, let's go very quickly, okay? God is actually separating you that you will clearly know his voice. Because when you are surrounded by the voices of the town, by the voices of so many people, your friends are speaking, your girlfriends are speaking, your, your, your edge mates are speaking, the internet is speaking, notifications are coming in, like everything, it seems to be a busy world. Sometimes the voice of the Lord dwindles in our life and it dies out eventually. The conviction dies out eventually. But God wants us to separate his voice from the voices of the world and that is why he will take you low. That is why you will feel like you are separated. I remember when I was in Kayunga, and I usually say that the things God has taken me and where he has brought me and where he is taking me, I believe that so many of those prayers, I prayed while I was still under my mother's care. And those are so many prayers that I prayed while I was in Kayunga. I remember at one point I was in a 40-day fast and I came back home, it was a Sunday, to come and visit my mother and she was telling me what's wrong with you what's wrong with you but I remember in that season I prayed for my marriage I did not envision any marriage anytime soon but I prayed for my marriage I prayed for my children I prayed for my 
calling and the purpose God had put me uh, put on my heart. And I prayed that God, from now on, let this life be more intentional. I don't want to bump into mistakes and bump into, no, I have done that for the longest time. I have been the lost sheep for the longest time. But Lord, help me find the way because my siblings are counting on it, because my family is counting on it, because the world is counting on it. So the prayers that I made, while I was in my season of separation, those prayers have manifested in a big way than I can ever, ever even ask for. And sometimes I have no reason to even pray. I only have reasons to be grateful and to, be, to, to express my gratitude to God because of the season of separation. And the last one, okay? God takes us through the seasons of separation, the season of being low, of being abandoned and rejected, of going low, that he will make you unrecognizable to the people that could only recognize you by your wounds. The people that could only recognize you because your family went through a, 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 a tough situation. The people that could recognize you by your divorce, by your scars, by your failure, by your... There are those people that only know us by our past, the things that happened. And let me tell you, when God takes you through a moment of separation, and this is so true for me, the girl that didn't go back to that, that that girl that didn't have money to go to school the girl that you know had had uh, i mean a very huge family wrangle the the girl that you know all those names to the extent some people were saying abo batambulira mu bire bajja kuwanuka yo and we bana malo kuwanuka yo bajja kufumbirwa abachinja jina aba boda boda and what i don't have any anything wrong i don't hold anything wrong against butcher butcher men and boda bodas but at least i knew that god that was not my thriving place. No. My thriving place was not to get married to a drunkard. My thriving place was not to die a boating. My thriving place was not that place. So God had to take me away and take me through a moment of separation that he will equip me with the tools, number one, that we talked about to be able to thrive in, uh, in my life. And number two, to clearly listen to his voice and to hearken to his voice. And number three, to make me unrecognizable to the people that had labeled me in the world because by the time I was coming out of my my hiding my separation my lowest point and actually for me let me tell you God is is a funny guy and God sometimes he can be so comical okay that you know he will take you from a place of separation and low and 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 and, and being forgotten and then he will take you to a moment <laughs> to a moment that seems so worse of pain and heartbreak he will take you to a, a place of where you you feel like the world is about to end but just like i said success is not linear and in God's eyes, he says that when you are humble, he will elevate you. Okay, so I want us to move together and very speedily because if I dwell on that, God wants you to come down to the house of the potter that he will mold you. Okay, that he will make you into something beautiful. A surrendered clay is a beautiful clay. A surrendered clay is an empowered clay. A surrendered clay is a clay that is going to thrive no matter what the situation. And let me tell you, a complaining clay will never be beautiful. Why? Because it will think it's better than the porter. It has better ideas than the porter, okay? So the world knew you for something. The world knows you as someone who does not have self-esteem. The world knows you as someone who grew up from a poor background. The world knows you as someone who, who has gone through a heartbreak, who has abandoned and rejected. The world knows you as a person who has lost your business. The world has labeled you as a, as a failure, okay? It has put that label on you. But when you go through your long moment god is going to make you unrecognizable that people will ask you is this the person that we knew is this the hilda that we knew is this the any that we knew is this the jemima that we knew he is going to make you that person that is unrecognizable in the face of the world okay and I feel God is speaking to a certain category of people. And I want us to go through it very quickly. Uh, for the people that need to hear the voice of God. 
For so long, you feel like you've been in a dry place where you're not hearing the, the voice of God. God is saying, arise and go low into the house of the porter and listen to my voice. You have to be very intentional to listen to the voice of God and to hearken to his voice that is obedience. Okay? And obedience has fruits. Obedience has fruits of long life. Obedience has fruits that your enemies will be dealt with by God. That your battles will be fought by God because you have been obedient obedient okay and god wants to take some things away when god is molding the clay that means he's saying you know this does not belong with you you know this kind of anger this kind of you know uh reacting to everything this kind of when uh, even when you go to see the clay i have been in places uh where there's there's clay but the clay most of the times is dirty so someone needs to do something in order to take away all the things that that the chaff out of the clay now that is what God does and it's not a smooth process it's not a smooth process okay but he wants to take away that chaff away from us okay for the people that have lost their voice and the people that could not speak up for themselves, the people that had lost self-esteem, had lost confidence, for the people that um, were looking to others for approval, were looking for validation from others, okay? Now, those are the things that God wants to take away from you, that you will not wait for anyone to tell you you're beautiful, you will not wait for anyone to tell you that it's possible to open that business, that you will not wait for anyone to tell you that you can be impactful, that you can be a great speaker, that you can be a great teacher, that you can be a great pastor, that you can empower the world and transform the world. God wants to take away that fear. He wants to take away that um that, that, that doubt in you, okay, so that you will be that empowered, surrendered clay in his hands, that he will do so many things in your life, okay? Now, there are so many people, I wrote it down here and say that those that come to the end of their life, there are so many of us about to say like we have gotten literally at the verge of our, at, at the end, at the verge, the end. And you just feel like, you know what? Uh, I don't think I can do anything more. This message is for you. And God is speaking to you that you are clay in his hands. And when the Bible says that the clay actually got spoiled, whatever vessel God was molding got spoiled. But the, the sorry, the potter was making, but he made another vessel that seemed good to the potter. And now if God is our potter, that means that he knows what is beautiful and he knows what will work best in our interest. OK, and. God is speaking to you if you are the kind that wants to disrupt genetic imprints. Okay, and I've usually said this, we even had an altar uh, at home just to, you know, uh, ancestral spirits and things that were following because I saw there's a lot that was following in my bloodline and I was like, no, life, good life starts with me. Okay, and if I must start it, then I must build an altar and I must pray and consecrate my family, okay, to God. And let me tell you, you are going to change generational narratives. If the things that you're about to attain are things that your the, the, the four generations did not attain. The kind, not, not status, not but the peace of mind, the you know, the, the long life, the happy children, the good jobs, the good opportunities. You're going to soar high with wings like eagles more than your ancestors could. Okay, so we are going to be the ancestors who live a legacy of healing and wholeness. And if you believe in that, I want you to claim it. We are going to be the ancestors. You know, when you talk about ancestors, everyone is talking about the dead. And everyone, when you talk about the dead, oh my God, everyone wants to run away. Everyone, you know, feels like, you know what, you should not even bring that topic. Don't talk about the ancestors. It's the worst topic anyone can talk about. But I want you and I to be the kind of ancestors that our children's children and the fourth generation will put on their walls and they will say that I am thriving because my great-grandmother prayed. I am 
am thriving because she broke a generational curse. I am thriving because she changed a chapter in our book of history. I am thriving because she did not settle for lace. I am thriving because she was obedient to the voice of God and she listened to the voice of God. She arose and went down into the potter's house and God caused her or him to listen to the voice of God. Okay? We are about to finish. We are about to finish. But I don't know if you are taking this in. I feel I'm being blessed and I feel that God is opening new doors of opportunity in our lives. Okay? So we are going to be the ancestors. I told you we are the last authentic generation. So we are going to be the ancestors that our children will make us their screen their screen savers and their wallpapers and they will and they will make us their affirmations that every day they will wake up and say I am riding on the strength of my great grandmother Christine, okay, just like my children, just like Ariella and Ariel, when they see their grandmother on the TV and they start granny, 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 my mother has broken a, some, some, some generic, uh, some uh, ancestral, uh, ancestral spirits and has started a new generation and not on my watch. My children are going to thrive under the same and their children's children are going to thrive under the same because the blessing that I am cultivating and I am taking on right now, it is dripping down to their generation. Okay. And we are going, they are going to live our, 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 the things that we have not even lived in this world. Uh, let's uh, conclude this message because if if I don't stop, I will not stop. That's okay. <laughs> this message is for someone that has been isolating and feeling so low. And um, I'm telling you, obey the voice of God and you are not going to be disappointed in your life. You are not going to, to be disappointed in your life. The rest of the things that I have here, I'm just going to read through. And God is speaking to someone who will not give up when things get hard. Because if you are the clay and you are on the wheel, Things are going to get tough. You'll feel like it's burning. You'll feel like it's hard. But let God mold you into something beautiful. So do not quit. Okay? And I encourage you... <clears throat> Uh, to be able to um, to to take away that to deal away with the spirit of fear because this is what fear does. Fear gives birth to procrastination, and procrastination helps you give birth to no results. Okay, so if you are the kind that does not want, because when fear grips you, there is nothing literal, you cannot do anything. Fear cannot dwell where faith is, and faith cannot dwell where fear is. So you must take away the fear in order to grow, okay? And then I want us to know that we are not operating like, um, like orphans. God is our father. And let me tell you, we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from a place of victory. So already everything is in our favor because we believe in God and because he is our father. It doesn't feel like that because sometimes we do not surrender. It doesn't feel like that because we do not believe. It doesn't feel like that because, you know, we look at other people's lives and we want to be like so and so. But God wants you to be like you, that the original you that he created when your, your your parts were being woven together in the sacred places, okay? Clay is formed from soil and from dirt. And clay is formed when dirt mixes with water. God says that he is the living water. Jesus says he is the living water. So when the dirt, when the, the one that is rejected and abandoned comes in contact with the water, the living water, which is Jesus, then you become the clay that God uses to create a beautiful thing. And I want you to put yourself in that scenario. I don't want you to be, as, as I end, I don't want you to be the clay that wants to be the potter. The word that says, you know what, God, I understand this better. You know, I know this problem better because I've had this problem, the same problem again. You know, I have ideas. You know, I'm, I, I, you know, I have dreamt about this. You know, I have say, I studied about this, and so and so has told me about this. Why do we walk according to what we have heard and what who so and so said and what your singer cast you about? And why do we believe in all those? Let's believe in the report of God because when we believe in the report of God, then we become that clay that is transformed into a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful vessel. 
Okay, I just pray that the grace of the, the grace of the Lord will abound, that the grace of the Lord will carry us to places that we have never dreamt about. And I pray that we become the surrendered clay to be the empowered clay and to be the clay that changes the narratives of generations ahead of us. In the name of the Lord, amen.